So in the last video, I promised that we would go into what STL tokens are. But before we do that, it's important that we understand what assets are, specifically asset digitization and what it has to do with tokenization and eventually SPL tokens. So what is an asset? An asset is essentially something that is useful and valuable. It could be an object, an expertise, a cryptocurrency, which we just talked about, etc. For example, it could be a house. And asset digitization is creating a digital version of physical analog assets. For example, documents or tradable goods in a supply chain. We can also think about it like turning a house into specific tokens that represent ownership over that house. So what is the benefit of this and where am I getting at? Well, by digitizing assets, we can conduct things on a digital platform where transactions between these assets become easier. Essentially, we're using technology to ease the records of ownership and transactions between assets. So what does asset digitization mean in a more blockchain context. So firstly, in asset digitization, the rights to an asset are converted into a digital token on the blockchain. For example, we can imagine that the rights to this house are converted into digital tokens. This is so that when we want to change ownership or have things to do with interacting with the owners, these ownership rights are transmitted and traded on a digital platform. So in summary, we are representing real world assets by tokens on the blockchain. Essentially, what this means is that we are tokenizing our assets so that we can put them on the blockchain, which is a more secure platform. Again, what does this all mean? So let's try to continue with the example of the house to understand what this means a little bit further. So instead of just the term digitization, we're gonna switch to the term asset tokenization which means just turning our assets into tokens. One aspect of asset tokenization is to convert ownership rights of an asset into a digital token. So for example, let's say that we have this asset of a house that is worth $200,000. We are going to represent this with 200,000 tokens, where each token represents a 0.0005 share of the assets. This is going to help later with ownership. For example, let's say that this house is owned by 10 people because it could be a really big house. Because it's shared by 10 people and we represented this house with 200,000 tokens, we can split up these tokens between these 10 people so that each person has around 20,000 tokens to represent their share of the assets. These tokens that we've made are issued on a blockchain platform that can support its smart contracts. For example, we can put these tokens on the Solana blockchain so that we can execute programs, which is the same thing as smart contracts, with these tokens. Well, let's say that somebody is renting out the house and has to pay these 10 people. Well, through the blockchain platform, because all of these tokens and ownership is recorded on Solana, the blockchain, we can create a smart contract to transfer these funds to the 10 people who own the house. Another thing about tokenization is that we can represent people having a share or a say in this asset. By having a share in the asset, they have some ownership and by having some ownership, they get the benefits and responsibilities of that house. So by buying a token, they buy ownership. This system of tokenization is a lot simpler and also a more secure way to record ownership and keep track of things. So now you have an idea of what assets are and the realm of possibilities that they could be. You also know that these assets can be converted into tokens and be put on the blockchain. So let's talk a little bit about how we can build tokens on the Solana blockchain. This is where SPL tokens come in. In Solana, all tokens are created through the Solana token program. The token program allows for there to be standards for creating tokens, and it allows for a very easy system if someone ever wants to create both a fungible token and a non-fungible token. On the other hand, if you come from Ethereum, you know that there's two different processes for creating fungible and non-fungible tokens. In Solana, there is a common implementation for both fungible and non-fungible tokens which is the token program that I just mentioned. This also means that when we deploy tokens on the token program, we need to specify if something is a fungible and non-fungible token. We'll be learning all about the token program and more about making fungible and non-fungible tokens in later lessons in this module. So because the token program is provided by the Solana program library, we call most of these tokens SPL tokens. So usually when you think of a Solana token, you think of SPL tokens. Technically speaking, both fungible 
fungible tokens and non-fungible tokens on Solana are SPL tokens because they are both made through the Solana program library. However, when it comes to terminology, we refer to SPL tokens as just being fungible tokens and we refer to non-fungible tokens to just be called NFTs. So just keep this in mind as you move forward with these lessons and through this module that this is the terminology standard for Solana tokens. So we've pretty much talked a lot about tokens, but we haven't talked about non-fungible tokens in particular, which nowadays is a pretty popular topic. So in our next video, we'll be talking all about NFTs and even how they're sold on Solana. So I'll see you in the next video.